Good afternoon, everyone. Well, I did not expect this many people to come, honestly. Uh, it's an honor, really, to have you all here. Uh, as you all know, 8 March, International Women's Day. Uh, so, in occasion, our English teacher had the brilliant idea of charging us with some exposés, uh, talking about women. I will be accompanied by my friends, Alma Sahel, Sarah Prisk. And again, thank you for coming, thank you for your time. It's really an honor to have you here. I'll leave the stage to my friend. So, hello everyone. Today we're going to present to you three main subjects. Uh, the first subject is, uh, woman in, is woman in Islam. So, the experience of Muslim women vary widely between and within different societies at the same time. Their adherence to Islam and its shared structure that affects their life to a varying degree and gives them a common identity that might serve to bridge the wide cultural, social, and economic difference between them. So, we will study the classical position of, uh, of women in Islam. So, both the Quran of Islam, Socrates, and spoken or acted example of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we mean by the Sunnah, are to seek knowledge. The Quran commands all Muslims to exert effort in the pursuit of knowledge, irrespective of their biological sex. It's constantly encouraged Muslims to read, think, contemplate, and learn from the sign of God in nature. Moreover, Muhammad encouraged education for both male and female. He declared that seeking knowledge was a religious duty. By then, up and every Muslim man and a woman, each woman is under a moral and religious obligation to seek knowledge, develop her intellect, broaden her outlook, cultivate her talents, and then utilize her potential to the benefit of her soul and her society. So, we all know that uh, Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is a prophet. He's our prophet. He's our idol in in our life. He used to love his woman. So, consequently, so consequently, uh, we have to love our uh, our women. And uh, the love he had for his woman is obligatory on all mankind, since he is our model in perfection. That must be emulated. So Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to say uh, the better of you is a better to his woman and he used also to say the whole world is to be enjoyed but the best thing in this world is a good woman and by definition a good woman is a good wife and a good mother. So we will see some property rights of uh, Muslim women in Islam. So, for men is a sharp from what the parents and neo Latin believe, and for women and covered only upper class women. Over time, when women's rights have improved elsewhere, those in many Muslim dominated countries have remained comparatively restricted. Women property rights in the Quran are from parents and near relatives. A woman, according to Islam tradition, does not have to give her pre-marriage position to her husband and receive a mahar. That means a dower. Try a woman receives to employ or business after marriage is hers to give and need not contribute towards family expenses. This is not once the marriage is consummated. It's is exchange for attempting sexual submission. A woman is entitled to Nafaqa, namely the financial responsibility for reasonable housing, food and other household expenses for the family, including the school, for a child on the husband. In traditional Islamic law, a woman is also not responsible for the upkeep of home and maintenance payments of any work she does in domestic and women in Islam. A firm of whether a newborn or a widow is not in any way a disgrace either to an individual Muslim man or to Muslim society as well. She cannot not be buried next to her husband, but Islam give her the privilege, give her a second chance to remarry and to live under the protection of another legitimate husband. There is one clear time which, in which Islamophobia is seen in media. It is predictably in the wake of the 
we see news, news stories published by various exposure of the veiled horrors that face women in the Middle East. These articles have some air of credibility because they were made as exposés to because they were made as exposés, claiming to uncover secrets long hidden and to be a source of truth for the for the American citizens looking for answers in tragic times. The United States the United States is not is not the sole guilty part, however. In an article in, in, in on media manipulation of the truth on terrorism, Diathusu places the blame upon all the Western world, stating the mainstream Western media rejects Islam as an as an inimical to civilized values. The, dem the demonizing Western media Western media has an agenda, and that agenda is accumulate views, money, good ratings. The media obsession with portraying Muslim women as an oppressed group can be seen via the influx of stories covering modern killings and modern violence in recent years. One example of this, of this was in the Netherlands, where two honor killings in 2002 and 2004 generated massive amounts of press coverage, and voices like that of Ayan Hisri Ali provided lots of coverage. Hisri Ali, an outspoken activist on topics pertaining to women's rights and the, and the reformation of Islam was quoted in an interview. You know how it goes, Monarchians. It's a component of something bigger. It, was, it has to do with sexual morality within Islam. The desire to control women's sexuality, the call to a virginity rate. A woman who doesn't keep to the rules can be expelled, hit, or murdered. Or murdered. This is a prime example of the, co of the concept of framing. For the sake of comparison, in European countries, one in three women suffer from sexual assault. In the United States, one in five women have been sexually assaulted. Interestingly enough, the media makes little to no attempt to justify or explain these, or, uh, these atrocities using religion as a source of blame or explanation. Women are an easy target for the Western media to explore. And in utilizing the sympathetic reaction it generates, they draw in more consumers by shaping the stories and situations of very particular Muslim women. The media are able to paint a picture that is far bigger than reality.
which, which means uh, post-traumatic uh, stress disorder, which is a mental health problem that some people don't know. وقد جمعت أسرتي قدرة عظيمة في صفتي من أحبة الزين 
هما لا يمشي طب هما ذلك من خلوق الريح رفيق المشاعر ويمسح من خلوق الجوه أو البري وذلك من خلوق الريح على تأخذ المسح المنقذ الضروري لذا فإن هرقا متعني من قصة التعريف وإجلال قيمتها من قرار كثير من المجتمعات من كثير من كثير من المجتمعات لأن لا تنحسن موازن كثيرون وتبقى صامتة لأن لا تنحسن موازن كثيرون لأنها تصف يوما إلى هنا تكون رحلتنا مع الثلاثة فقدمتات أترككم مع قصة ثانية من الأرض مقدم باللغة الفرنسية مع محور جديد من طرف صوفيا أمينة ودراء التي تقدمنا مشهورة La femme est un être dont l'humanité tout entière ne peut s'en détacher. La femme est l'amour. La femme est l'amour. La femme est l'amour. Oh, 
by a Chicago TV station to host her own money show. According to Fox magazine, Oprah was the richest African American of the 20th century and the world's only black billionaire for two years running. Life magazine held her as the most influential woman of her generation. She is a dedicated activist for children's rights. In 1994, President Bill Clinton signed a bill into law that Winfrey had pro proposed to Congress, creating a nationwide uh, database of convicted abusers. In 2002, Winfrey was made the first recipient in the Academy of Television Arts and Science. Bob Hope Humanitarian Award. In 2005, what this week made Winfrey the greatest black philanthropist in American history? Oprah's engine nature raised more than $15 million, the first African American woman to be honored with the token Award for life achievements. As she ended one of her powerful speeches, I will end my life. I want all the girls right here now to know that a new day is in the horizon. And when that day will come, there, it's because of a powerful woman, some of whom are right here in this room, and some pretty phenomenal men who, who are hard to make sure that they become the leaders who take us to the time when, when nobody ever
السيدات لاننا لسنا لنا يوم واحد للاحتفال وانما ايامنا كلها عيد شكرا لمن هيأ هذا الحفل شكرا لمن اخرج هذا الحفل من الوجود بالقوه الى الوجود بالفعل على حسب تعبيري ارسطو شكرا لاداره